Now we're going to move on to the expenses. The best way to do expenses in your business plan is to do them out first in your assumption sheet and then import that into your profit and loss. So the way I like to do it is to lay the three years side by side and then to simply input the figures for each year. So for this example, we have rent and rates and we'll say that it costs 8,000 each year. Now the profit and loss figures may have two or three figures behind them that are added together to make the total figure that appears in the profit and loss. Here's an example of that. For marketing, we have pay-per-click, which we'll just input for years one, two, and three now. And you'll notice, after we input the figure for year three, that we have miscellaneous marketing which is marketing materials that we know we're going to need but we don't know exactly what we need yet so we're going to input them and now we're going to get a total marketing figure by adding the pay-per-click with our miscellaneous marketing and it's this total marketing figure that we import into our profit and loss account Again, make sure you back up all your figures and you've researched them. So we'll just move on now and we'll fill out the rest of the expenses and using the same process. Okay, so we've, went, we've looked at all the other uh, expenses. Now, we're going to look in detail at depreciation because you put depreciation in your profit and loss account. And your depreciation is related to the fixed assets that you have, like machinery, computers, cars, whatever, delivery vans. So this is how you do it. You list the fixed assets that you've purchased. Okay. So in year one, we're going to purchase computers for €3,000. We're also going to purchase uh, office equipment for an additional... 1,000 euro, okay. Now, what we need to do is depreciate that. And how we achieve, get the depreciation figure is we find the useful life of the asset and then divide the cost of our fixed assets by the useful life. So all our assets are gonna be depreciated on the same level in this example. And what we do is just a quick note for us so we know to put this in the profit and loss account. We work out our depreciation figure by, again, inputting the useful life in years of the asset. So what we do is we input the useful life in years of our fixed assets and we simply divide the figure that we have for our fixed assets by its useful life in years. So we're looking at, for this example, dividing the total fixed asset value of 4,000 euro by the useful life of four years. I know we can do it in our head, but it's always good to do it on the spreadsheet in case you have to make changes later. So we get 1,000 euro. But what we need to do now is we need to show that in year two, even though we didn't purchase any fixed assets, the fixed asset value at cost is still there and still needs to be depreciated. So what we do is we sort of carry forward the fixed asset value from the previous year. And we do this 
until the end of year four, which you don't show in the projections, when the, the cost price is actually worth nothing. So you can't appreciate it anymore. Again, all we're doing is just showing the cost price of assets we purchased in year one, and they're depreciated still in year two and year three. So in year two, we divide the 4,000 by four, and in year three, we divide the 4,000 by four, by the cell that indicates the useful life of the asset. Okay, so now what we do in the profit and loss is we simply import the expenses that we've worked out in our assumptions. So what we're doing here, we're just linking the profit and loss account, the profit and loss projections back to our assumptions that we've made. Okay, so it's just a matter of, of going through each step like that. Now what we do is we add all our expenses together to get our total expenses. using the simple sum function on your spreadsheet. Now, all we do is subtract the total expenses from our sales to work out our net profit. As you can see, the profit and loss projections are actually very straightforward if you know how to do them. So now that we've them done, we're gonna move on on the next video and take a look at how to do the cash flow projections.